Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel and yet another Creation Club mod review. And this time it's the turn of the Civil War Champions. And we'll be asking the question whether the Creation Club is finally releasing content worth buying and more importantly, giving you enough information to make the choice whether you wish to purchase or not. So let's crack on. And seeing this is just a kind of linear, straightforward, box standard quest, uh, I'll do this um, whilst I'm burbling on because, uh, yeah, I don't think a, <laughs> there's not too many, uh, too many spoilers uh, by me doing this. So, yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so this is a creation that has two new armor sets based on the Imperial Legion and Stormcloaks and four new weapons, as well as a quest in which you'll duel a champion of the opposing faction. Now, the two sets of armor are unique and have never been seen before, though it is a kind of return of the Imperial Dragon armor that we saw in Oblivion, but it has a significantly different look. We also see new champion armor for the Stormcloaks and it can be purchased for the princely sum of 600 Creation Club credits which is around $6 or £5 in real money. The creation was primarily made by Borks25, while the quest was created by Chris Takahashi. Borks25 has done some really excellent armor mods, mainly for Oldrim, but there's quite a few for SE, so just search on Nexus using Frankly as your search term, and they're well worth checking out. Chris Takahashi is responsible for the excellent interesting NPCs mod, make sure you check that out, and he did the quest for the recent Vigil Enforcer Armour set mod released on Creation Club recently. Uh, having re uh, reviewed the Vigil Enforcer Armour set, which was actually pretty good with a decent quest, but I concluded that good as it was, it just wasn't $6 good, so I'm hoping the Civil War Champions, being of the same type and cost, will prove not just good, but good value as well. So this mod simply has you join either the Stormcloaks or Imperials as their champion to face off against the opposing champion. And as this quest is pretty damn linear, I'll do it as a playthrough, upgrade everything, uh, and then I'll give my thoughts at the end. So let's just dive in. Okay, as we can see, we've uh, already been over to Windhelm and picked up uh, the Stormbear gear and I've got to say my first impressions are these are really really nicely textured um, and I look at some decent uh, enchantments on him yeah awesome yeah this actually uh, bows quite well for this mod so let's see we've got sword uh, da -da -da, 45 points or frost damage to health and stamina looks like a bog standard sword Actually, you know the detail on that's actually quite nice when you look at it closely. And when we're in Stormbear armor, grants increases to armor racing. Actually, that's quite cool. That reminds me of kind of Byzantine, Byzantinian armor. I'll have a little check through actually before I just do my review at the end and see uh, where this is influenced by. But it looks, it looks kind of Byzantinian. Okay, right. Let's head off. I might cut out a few bits and bobs of this, um, but uh, and oh yeah, there's a letter, wasn't there? And quick read that. Where are we? Do 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 do. Those are old three pieces note. We have challenged the Imperial Dogs of Duel of Champions. Of course, their champion will be in name only. Anyone who licks the boots of the Empire can hardly lay claim to such a title. That's why I must find someone. Da, 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 da. If they can kill five of those monsters, five Imperials will be putting a knife with butter. Okay, right. <laughs> a very bitter little man who wrote that. Okay, let's go. Why should I? Let's put on first. That does look quite cool. And the weapons. Where are you? Ah, oh, down there. I 
Oh yes, thief pack, get rid of the thief pack pack. Oh yeah, that does look quite cool. That's quite a cool axe actually. Yeah, looking good. I reckon actually by the look of this armour, I reckon it's kind of like it's got an armour of a um, a knight, a horseback. Yeah, a warrior on horseback. That's what it kind of reminds me of. Anyway, so let's go to White Watch Tower. There you go. My biggest dread in this is gonna, it's going to be heavy. Oh, bugger, bloody dragon. Yeah, this is going to be a... Um, all heavy armor again. I guarantee you. I... Yeah, I'm sure it is. Okay, Bunny Dragon, let's deal with him. Where is he? I might as well deal with him with uh... Good night. Yeah, you know I did uh, the alternate, the alternate start, live another life mod. But I've had that on this uh, this build, and there was no dragons in that playthrough, so I didn't activate Helgen for a while. And do you know what? It was a lot better. I hate to say it, but um, you are a very interesting individual. thank you very much. In you go. Uh, yeah, it was much better. The random uh, spawning of dragons is actually. A Pain in the hole after a while. What they should have done is far, far less dragon attacks and made them more like uh, boss fights, in my opinion, anyway. Anyway, so let's get to the issue in hand. We've got to go and beat up an Imperial. By the way, I chose this one because I was having nightmares getting this mod to start. Absolute bloody nightmares. So in the end, I actually went to Helgen, activated that, and then joined the Stormcloaks to see if I could get this mod to spawn. And it didn't spawn. It just appeared after about a couple of weeks. So anyway, I just joined the uh, Stormcloaks. Well, it was either one didn't care. OK, looks like we got a proper battle. But um, I've brought two Stormies and an Inigo. Weather for a war, no? This should be fun. Let's start. Oops. Okay. And what we can do, we can pop out the dwarven drone fry. <laughs> I'm rubbish with two-handed weapons. That was it. That was, um, let's be honest, a fairly uneven fight, <laughs> to be honest with you. That was really unfair. Who cares? We won. Okay, let's see what we got from this guy. Okay, that's, oh, that's cool. 
Oh yeah, that's cool. I've got to say, so far, the, th the detail on this armor is the best I've seen so far. Out of all the mods. We'll have a look at these in more detail later on, but uh, just have a quick look now. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that is really good. Actually, the enchantments on these are, are, are really good on the Imperial stuff. In fact, I'll go as far as to say the Imperial stuff, enchantment-wise anyway, and actually, to be honest with you, from what I can see, aesthetics, is actually better than the uh, Stormcloak one. But it doesn't matter, because you get both sets anyway. Oh, I do like that. Oh, I do like that. It's a shame you can't use spears in uh, in this game. 45 points, extra fire damage. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, very good. Oh, that's a a proper gladius. Lovely detailing. And let's just put it on just for shits and giggles. Where are you? Oh yeah, that's good. Oh, that is really cool. Yeah, something like, like, like out of Gladiator in there. Okay, right, so anyway, we've gone and got it. Uh, we've seen what we've got. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disappear off. I'm going to enchant everything. I don't enchant, sorry, smith everything up. And then we'll have a look in great detail of what we got here. See you in a minute. Okay, here we are, and we just need a few steel ingots and some leather to get these little beauties upgraded. And as usual, I'll remind everyone that we're all pretty much at different stages in smithing, enchanting, and alchemy. So we'll all get different mileage out of our upgrades. So these figures are just for comparison purposes. Also, I seem to have picked up some heavy armor XP, so some of the stats on screen may be a point or so out, but essentially they're correct. Oh, and a quick FYI, it seems you can't make this armour as a forge and neither are you able to disenchant it, sadly. Well, in my game anyway. If any of you are able to do uh, any or both of these things, then let me know in the comments below. The reason I want to know is that on a couple of occasions, the ability to craft something has only become available a couple of weeks or so after installing the mod for some weird reason. That's on my system. Anyway... It's time to take a look at all this lovely shiny new stuff we've got. And we'll start off with the Stormbear armor set, and I have to say it seems to have a Byzantinian uh, Vrangian Guard kind of influence, and I'd, I would say it almost looks like it should be a Mounted Warrior's armor. Um, but anyway, we'll have a look at that later. But I've got to say, it, I've got to say it is lovely. Really nice detail in this. Anyway, let's look at the stats and we'll start with the helmets and I love the bear embellishment on the crown of the helmet. Really nice touch. Anyway, the base stats are an armor of 26, a weight of 15. And when wearing the Stormbear armor, grants an increase to armor rating, which is a good enchantment at an early stage, but soon becomes pretty obsolete when you progress in alchemy, enchanting and smithing. So I kind of wish I'd chose another enchantment on this one. But as I said, it's handy for a low level character and I've upgraded it to 166. And so we'll take a quick peek at the Stormbear armor itself. I think this is one of the best looking and most 
realistic armour sets out there. And as I mentioned before, it seems to have that whole Byzantinian, Varangian guard vibe going on. It really looks awesome. And the base stats are armour 55, weight of 50, which is bloody heavy to be honest, and comes with a really decent enchantment which increases your health by 75, increases frost damage, uh, sorry, frost resistance by 50%, and decreases time between shouts by 20% great enchantment in my opinion and uh, I've managed to upgrade this to 336 and next up are the gauntlets which are made from leather and really really nicely detailed I love the bare engraved uh, and stitched uh, in, into them it's really nicely done and these have base stats of armor 21 weight of 6 and whilst wearing these power attack stamina cost is reduced by 20% and I've got them up to 161 armor rating the boots which are in similar construction to the gloves lovely stitching engraving and these have a base stats of armor 21 and a weight of 10 and whilst wearing them stamina regenerates 10% faster and frost resistance is increased by 20% which is most definitely good for heavy arming heavy armor wearing character and don't forget if you have the forgotten seasons mod installed you should have picked up the Dwemer drone fly that also increases your stamina regeneration by 30 percent and the last bit of the armor set before we look at the weapons is the shield which is a lovely thing to behold i love the colors and the detailing on this it could almost make me start to use a shield really good work by the mod authors anyway it has a base stat of armor 41 and a weight of 15 and has a really decent enchantment which doubles the damage from bashing and blocks 20 percent more damage as well as increasing frost resistance by a further 10 percent and i've got this up to uh, 100 81 armor rating so now it's time to take a look at the hitty things starting off with a sword it's a pretty normal looking steel sword nicely textured but nothing wow in my opinion now it's worth noting I do have XP and perks in one handed and I simply can't find the actual standard base stats so the figures will be different for you but that aside the stats I have are damage 29 and a weight of 10 and a pretty average enchantment where the victim takes 40 points or 45 points sorry of frost damage to health and stamina and I managed to improve it to 287 damage and finally we have the war axe called sun's judgment which at first i thought was like the sword and a bit bland but actually the detailing is very very good i love the engraving on the axe head and it would have been like some of the war axes used by the norse and anglo-saxon warriors in the 8th uh, to the 11th century anyway the base stats are weight of 31 which is heavy damage 31 and the target takes 75 points of frost damage to health and stamina and I managed to upgrade this to 175. Now to the Imperial uh, armor. As far as I can understand it, this is a remake of the Imperial Dragon armor from Oblivion or the Emperor's armor as it's often known. It's a set of armor worn only by the Emperors themselves. It was presumably first worn by Tiber Septim and thus become a tradition for the Emperors that followed him. The enchantments are enhanced and two new weapons have been added and it really reminds me of the film Gladiator. This really is a fine piece of work by the creator. Again, let's start with the helmets. It's a really, really good piece of work that really makes a set. So I reckon facing this on the field of battle will be pretty damn intimidating for sure. Anyway, the base stats are armor 26, weight of 15, and has a chance of giving the wearer ebony flesh when low on health to increase your defense. I haven't had the chance to test how big or small that chance is, and that'll make all the difference whether this enchantment is worth it or not, but in principle, it's pretty damn cool. And I managed to upgrade it to 166. The Imperial Dragon Armor, looking absolutely awesome, has a base stats um, of armor 55 and weight 50. Uh, again, that's quite heavy. And this has an enchantment that offers 30% resistance to fire, shock and frost. Probably the best enchantment out of all of them, making this a set of armor usable throughout the whole game, playable through the whole game. And I managed to upgrade it to 336. 
And up next we have the gauntlets that are very nicely detailed indeed. And I love the metal and leather combo. It, and it comes with the uh, base stats of armor 21, weight of 6. And comes with a very useful enchantment that increases melee damage by 10%. And I managed to upgrade these to 161. And you look at the boots, again these are very nicely detailed and have base stats of armor 21 and a weight of 10 and the enchantment offers 10% faster health regeneration and further 20% fire resistance and I managed to upgrade these to offer 161 in armor. And the last bit of the armor set before we look at the weapons is the shield, which again is a lovely thing to behold. The colors and detailing on this are absolutely fantastic and I genuinely have a hard time choosing between this and the Storm Bear's shield. Anyway, as a base stats of armor 41, weight of 15, and again a really decent enchantment which doubles damage from bashing and blocks 20% more damage, as well as increasing fire resistance by a further 10%. And I got this up to 181 armor rating. Okay now back to the hitty things and this sword is clearly based on the Roman weapon which was a sword similar to those used by the Celtic Iberians and was known as the Gladius Hispaniensis or Hispanic sword. Though it could be used for chopping and slashing its main use was, for, as, was as a thrusting weapon and the modders have done a really good job on this. Anyway the stats are damage 29. Now remember I have XP and perks in one hand and I don't have the actual real base stats so it will be different for you. Weight 10 and the enchantment burns the target for 45 points of damage and targets on fire take extra damage and I managed to upgrade this to 287. And last but certainly not least we come to the Imperial Warhammer and it's worth noting there's only one unique Imperial Warhammer in the game introduced in the Dragonborn DLC called the Champion's Cudgel and now we have two and I must say this is a beauty. Amazing detail, detail and design and though it probably looks more in place on a 12th or 13th century medieval battlefield, I reckon it's probably the best looking weapon out of the lot. And coming in with a base stat of damage and 31, 31 sorry, bear in mind I have no XP or perks in two-handed and has a weight of 31. And its enchantment burns the target for 75 points of damage and targets on fire take extra damage. And I managed to upgrade this to 175 a really really good looking weapon this one okay so let's have a look at these two armor sets on horseback now to be honest i'm pretty much more interested in the, in the storm bear armor um the imperial dragon armor i think is more suited to a, a foot soldier in in my opinion uh, but it does look kind of cool and does go with a salad a salad <laughs> saddle <laughs> anyway uh, well, let's look at the uh, storm bear armor yeah that's it that's more of a mounted warrior type um, back in the day they actually used to use the horses to take them to battle they did fight on horseback occasionally but essentially they get off and fight on foot um, but this looked really cool if you could actually have your shield showing and say like a, a lance or a contos or something like that that really would fit the part I think that looks absolutely deadly it really does yeah dead cool okay and here we are in our usual review spot to see what I think about this mod and I think it's excellent I think the detailing is superb and most definitely the best armor mod brought to the table by creation club to date the weapons are superb especially Akatosh's Talon which makes me want to play a two-handed character but anyone who's ever watched my videos know I'm utter muckcack with two-handed stuff so I won't put you through that the enchantments are decent especially the imperial armor enchantments and I have the feeling the mod author favored the imperials this time round I think the storm bear armor looks absolutely fantastic on the horse and really captures the look of a mounted warrior. It's such a shame. Mounted combat in this game is so utterly rubbish. But yeah, that set of armor on, on a horse really works in my opinion. Um, okay, to the downsides. Again, a no light armor option and no way to disenchant the armor. So for me personally, it's no use and we'll just end up on a mannequin. Um, I don't understand why they keep cutting out a large proportion of the player base that don't use heavy armor. Though you could just get the mod for weapons, I guess. Now this brings me to the turd in the soup as it does in every single review, the price. Now this mod is excellent and I love it. However, at $6 or five pounds in real money, 
I still think it's overpriced. Well, to be honest, I think all these mods are overpriced. I probably wouldn't mind so much if the odd authors got 50 or 60% so they actually get some money for their work, but they don't. It pretty much all goes to Bethesda. Um, but anyway, with no light armor or being able to disenchant anything and the quest being fairly limited, I just don't think it's worth the money. Now, but that doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't buy it, just that it's not worth the money being us. If I played a heavy armor character, I probably would buy it anyway, as the mod is very good and would serve as a good role playing armor and weapon set. But that is just my opinion. Now, what is most important is I've given you guys enough information to make up your own mind before you buy. Hope you enjoyed it and see you later. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment and hit the bell next to the subscribe button after you subscribed, obviously. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. See you later.